Okay, so let's get started, guys. Welcome. Um, today we're going to do a. Uh, today our lecture is going to be on rating your strategy, and I'm going to give one particular um, way to rate. Uh, for the example we're going to use today is pro gaps. But what I want to, the point I want to drive home today, guys, is if even if you're not a gap trader, if you're a forex trader, if you're a a, a base breakout trader. Whatever kind of strategy, whatever you do, you can do this. You can use this technique um, for anything that you do. And um, yes, of course, Anna is going to rate my presentation. She's saying, <laughs> "Okay, so rating your strategy." And I'm going to ask for also, guys, a lot of feedback. The more feedback you give during the strategy, or during the strategy, the more feedback you give during the presentation. Um, the better it's going to be for everybody. So please ask questions. The more, the better. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So rating your system. Um, rating, your, um, rating your strategy. Uh, first of all, what is a trading strategy? So I'd like to hear, um, first of all, if that, that, before anyone answers, I'd like to hear, if I could, from like Bruce, if he would be so kind, from Laurie. I like I like to hear from Bruce and Laurie if if they and you can say DK if you don't know Bruce and Laurie or um, something. But what what is a trading strategy? Do you guys uh, know? And you can just type in DK if you don't know, and then I'll ask the others to answer and see what they come up with. I'd like to hear what people uh, what people think that is, and uh, maybe uh, some of the answers I get will help me for my for for me to tweak this next time around. Yep, you're right. Bruce says a strategy is a set of rules. That's one way to look at it. A, a strategy is a set of rules. Um, anything else? Laurie, anything else besides a set of rules? Bruce and Laurie? Let me just ask them first, guys, and then I'll have you, best you guys fill in because I know some of you guys will uh, probably have some ideas as well, but I'd like to get some of the new people. Um, RT, RT as well. RT, what do you think? Uh, a trading strategy is. Bruce says it's a set of rules. Anything else? Any other thoughts? Okay, guys, I'm not getting any other feedback, so why don't we go ahead and open this up to everybody now. Um, Al, Fred, Anna Banana, Scott, um, what do you guys say? Uh, so RT says it's a setup, a trigger, a follow-through. A setup, a trigger, and a follow-through. Okay, so Jeff says it's a set of rules. Bruce says it's a set of rules. Something to design to exploit an edge. Entry, exit. That's the end result, Anna. It's a play that can repeat making money over and over again. That's what you hope for. To, that's, that's the goal of a train strategy that you can keep replicating and doing over and over again. And it's a, it's a profitable one where it makes you money over and over again. So that's the end result. That's the goal that you're looking for, absolutely. Um, well, a consistent, more than just a pattern, Scott says a consistent pattern you can consistently identify. What I would say is, and, and let's see what you guys think about this, I'd say a strategy is more of a macro look. It's a bigger time frame look of where you find your entries from. So it's not just an entry. An entry is different than a strategy. It's a, it's a bigger picture look. And as Bruce and Jeff said, it is a set of rules. Um, and I would say the entry, uh, the entry and the, the entry part is more of the, the uh, the entry is the entry. There's a difference between the strategy and the entry. So the, the entry is the entry. The strategy is more the bigger picture look. So um, playing stocks at 10.30 reversal time and looking for a particular pattern, that's a strategy. And then the entry is maybe a five-minute buy setup or breakout. Does that make sense, Bruce and RT and Jeff? Does that make sense to you guys, what I'm saying there? Give me a Y or an N. If it's if it's if it's a no, you can tell me why. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I just wanted to be clear on that. 
So once you have your strategy written, and I recommend all you guys, if you don't have a trading plan or you don't have a strategy, or if you're just beginning trading, I think Laura, Laurie might have said she's just starting out, you can start paper trading, Laurie, and anyone who's just beginning, and start putting down what the what the what the pattern look like what the daily pattern look like that you traded what was the actual entry what was the actual entry you traded try to figure something out that makes sense for you to you know a pattern you want to trade and try to find that same pattern over and over again and then and then track the results and see how it works better because if you do the same thing over and over again you're only going to get better right but if you try to make a birdhouse, and then you try to make a, an outhouse, and then you try to make a, a, a penthouse, and you try to make <laughs> you know, a bathhouse, and you're always trying to make a different house, it's going to be hard to do. But if you only specialize in making birdhouses, it's gonna, you're going to get good at making birdhouses a lot quicker than if you're trying to do something different every single time. It's the same thing with trading. Try to figure something out that you want to do and do that same thing over and over again and, and try to keep making it better until you get profitable. Hopefully, uh, does that make sense, guys? Type a one if that makes sense. Give me a little feedback. I want to make sure you're following me, especially the new people. Thanks, RT. I appreciate it. Jeff, thank you. Jose. Okay. So once you have a written strategy, how do you make it better, guys? Any, any thoughts? How do you make it better? This is, this is the easy question because I've already said it. How do you make it better? You test it. Exactly. You rate it. You rate it. You test it. Right. Jeff's got it. He's on top of it. Or I'm sorry, RT and Jeff. Thank you. So one example, uh, as I mentioned before, we trade pro gaps in this room. Um, so obviously, uh, that's, the, that's the example we're going to use today. But you can use this for anything that you try to trade. You know, Forex trading, whatever the case may be. So before you can understand... Um, so even if you're not trading pro gaps today, guys, this, this lecture can be helpful to you, but you, you can apply the principles in this lecture for whatever type of trading you do. So that's the point I want to drive home here yet. So don't just, you know, some people, ah, it's pro gaps. I don't trade pro gaps. I'm a swing trader or whatever. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, this isn't going to be helpful for me. No, that's not true. This can be very helpful to you because you can use this for whatever you trade. So what is a pro gap, guys? There's many different ways to define what a pro gap is. I'm going to give you my definition. And uh, obviously, Scott's definition can be different than mine. And that's fine. There's no problem with that. Um, like I said, there's many different ways to do it. My definition of a pro gap is number one. It's a gap over an opposite colored bar. That's the first criteria. That's one of the criteria of a pro gap that it could be. If it, if, so, for example, today, um, let me uh, give you an example. Um, why can't I see that? One second. So, to, for, so today, for example, EA, we're going to a daily chart, guys. EA, Electronic Arts, this is a daily chart right here. This is a red bar, and we gapped over that red bar. So that is a pro gap. It's gapping over a red bar. Okay, it can gap. Well, in this example, it's a gap over an opposite colored bar. I said opposite colored bar in my example back here, Scott. Right? Opposite colored bar. So it can, So a red bar would be for a long. A green bar would be for a short. So good point, Scott. Well, note taken. In this case, we're looking to long. Um, so over a red bar. Okay. Now, why is that such a good gap? Um, the reason that's such a good gap is uh, the reason that's such a good gap is uh, because your uh, what what what's happening here with this red bar, guys? What what's happening here? What is this creating? Gives with the letter S, and that's what we're trying to get at. This is what increases our odds to good trade. Shock, yes, Jeff's got it. It creates shock. All these people, all these people that are, uh, all these people that are um, short, that shorted yesterday, all thought this thing was going to go down, and now what's going on? Oh my goodness, the thing's gapping up. So they're like, oh crap. 
So if they shorted this yesterday, and this thing has been in a daily downtrend for a while, been in a weekly downtrend, some up, it's, it's been trending down. I, I wouldn't say it's in a weekly downtrend, but it's been trending down since uh, August. All these people are saying, oh, shoot, think, things might be changing here, right? So that's, that's one example of a pro gap over a red bar uh, today. Um, what's another criteria I use? Anybody? Uh, some of the get, people that are in here probably know. What else do I say is a pro gap besides an opposite over an opposite colored bar? Any uh, anybody? Uh, so some of the room members. Now this is the room members who probably know this more. Scott, Al, Fred. Yep, Scott's got one over two daily pivots. That is number two. Scott nailed it. A gap over two daily pivots. Um, because, so for example, if EA had, if EA was in an uptrend, once, one moment guys, I need to delete this message. So if EA was in an uptrend, um, but it had a it had a double top, you know. It came up to let's say it came up to twenty dollars, and then it came all the way down to fifteen. Then it came up to nineteen ninety, and it came all the way back down to sixteen. That's a double top. It's not looking so great for being along. Now all of a sudden today, it's at, yesterday it was at sixteen. Now it's gapping just over twenty dollars. That's gapping over two daily pivots. That's another what I call pro gap. And lastly, what's the third thing that I call? And let's see if someone else knows besides Scott. Scott, I'll let you clean up if no one else says anything. What would be the third criteria I use for a pro gap um, that, that people might know in this room? Al, Fred, come on. Don't let me down. <laughs> no, well, void is, uh, void is an element inside that. I always want void. But what's the, other, what's the other thing? Volume is something, too. That Again, that's another element that I want uh, that you're usually going to get with a, with a gap, and that's why we trade them, because it, they're usually earnings gaps. They're, they're news related, and so they're going to have volume because people are in there. <coughs> Let me give you a hint. Okay, sure, I'll do that, Lori. I'll do that in just a minute, and thanks for the question. Lori's asking, give me an example over two daily pivots. Okay. It has to do with a time frame higher than a daily, guys. There's your big hint. Yeah, market's another element, Rita, but that's what I'm looking for. Weekly, you got it. Rita's got it. Yep. So the third element is, and I try to lay this out very simply, opposite colored bar, daily pivot, and now third, over a gap over one weekly pivot. Okay, so now Lori's asking, what is a pivot or daily two daily pivots? And that's a great question. And um, people can define pivots in different ways, Lori. I'll tell you how I define it, and um, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, um, set in stone. Uh, it can be different for everybody, but 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 it's pretty much everyone has the same definition around this. It's relatively the same. Um, so we're going to look at um, we're going to look at BIDU today. BIDU bid you. So this is bid you's chart, Lori, before today. And you see how it went up here, and it came up here, and made a high at 167.55, and then it made a new a low right after that immediately. So it's when a stock makes a high and it has a lower high and a lower low on each side of it. So you see this made a higher high, has a lower high and a lower low on each side of it. So there's one pivot there. Does that make sense, Lori? Give me a why if that makes sense. Sure, sure. I'm sorry. So a pivot is when a stock makes an, a, a new a new recent high, or you know a high over the last few days, and on on each side of the bar it has a lower high. Whoops, it has a lower high and a lower low. So here's a lower high and a lower low on this side of the bar. Here's a lower high and a lower low on that side of the bar, and there's the pivot bar. So it makes a new high over the last few days, or, or it can be a longer time period. 
and then has a lower high and lower low, lower high and lower low on each side of that bar. Does, does, does that get? Does that make sense? Give me a wire in, Lori. I just want to make sure. Okay, so now let me ask you, Lori. Is this a pivot right here? Down here at uh, now, now you now you're now I'm, now I'm putting your feet to the fire. Is this a pivot right here down here at 1023? Right here, this little bottoming tail. Let me let me blow this up a little bit more. Right there. Is that a pivot right there? Well, okay. So this is a so I guess base. Okay, so let me ask you this: Is this a pivot right here at uh, 1025? Right there. Well. I mean, oh, oh, Fred, hang on. Let me ask. Yes. Okay. So the way I did, the way I, did, the way I uh, framed it to you, um, you're right. This would not be a pivot, and that is. But in actuality, right here, Lori, this is a pivot too. This is a pivot on the other side of the coin. So when you want to go higher, when you want to go higher, going higher, when a stock's an uptrend, it's when a stock makes a high and then has a lower high and lower low on the each side of it. A pivot on the downside is if you think the stock's going to roll over, it has a, on that particular case, it makes a low, and then it has a higher high and a higher low on each side of it. So that is actually a pivot, and that also is a pivot. I, I hope you follow that. Does that make sense, Lori? Okay, perfect. Awesome. And then um, you also mentioned, Lori, on EA, over an opposite colored bar um, on the uh, daily. See, this was a red bar. Oh, now first of all, I guess I need to explain that more, and that's a great thing you brought up, Lori. Do you uh, understand about candlesticks? What you know how they work? Give me a one for yes or a two for no. Okay, so uh, if, if a red candle is is created, obviously, then you know a red candle is created if it opens up and then it closes below where the open is. That creates the red candle. If it opens here and if it opens lower and, and, and closes higher, then you're going to get a green candle. So this was actually a red bar. So when it gaps over that red bar, that's doing opposite what you're expecting to do. So that is an opposite colored bar because it's create. This is when it gapped up, it's creating, it's reversing that red bar. Does that make sense, Lori? Okay, good. Just like. If this would have been a green bar going higher, let me give you, see if I can give you another example the other way, just to get it solid in your head in case there was any doubt. So like right here, Lloyd, this is a green bar right here. Let's go back to that day. And let's say this next day right here, we gap underneath this bar. That would be a gap down because you're expecting to go higher the next day, but it gaps underneath that bar. And that's creating shock. Does that make sense, Lloyd? Because everyone that's in this long right here, they think it's going to go up the next day. And if this gaps underneath that low, that's trapping those people in there. Does that make sense? And that's what hap often creates the downside for the short, if we're trying to short. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and move back to our lecture. So that's a pro gap again. Gap For me, gapping over an opposite colored bar for a long, it would be gapping over a red. For a short, it would be gapping under a green bar. Or a pro gap could be over two daily pivots. Obviously, if you're wanting to go long, it would be over two daily pivots on the upside. If you're wanting to go short, it would be two under, under two daily pivots, uh, you know, trending down, something that bounced off an area. Like, for example, Lori, if you had EA that bounced off 20, and then it goes up to 25, and it comes back down to 2010, and bounces off that, and makes a new, you know, goes back to 24, and then gaps below it. That could be two daily pivots, possibly. And then number three, it's a gap over a weekly pivot. Okay. Al's, oh, Al's jumping ahead of me here. Does the size of the bar matter? So now we got to get into. Uh, that was a pro gap. It took a little longer than I expected. Oh, juice. That that slide. Whoa, what happened to my... Uh-oh. Something happened to my... Uh... Oh, I got some slides in there that shouldn't have been there. I don't know what happened there. That was weird. Okay. So...
So that's a pro gap. So now, now that we know what a pro gap is, I want to you want to ask yourself what are the most important elements of your strategy that make it the highest odds? And this is what Al's getting into, the size of the bar matters. So on this particular one, um, ask yourself what is the most important elements of the strategy that make it the highest odds. So basically, if you have something that you like to trade, what makes it really, really good? What would what would really excite you if it looked it looked that way? That's what would really what would really excite you about that. So the first thing um, would be what makes a in this example since we're using pro gaps to rate what would make a pro gap great. Number one and how to rate it for me is where is the stock gapping to in terms of support or resistance. So if we're wanting to go long. So, Lori, if we're wanting this, if we want to go long, why is why is where it's gapping to? And, and you can say DK if you don't know, but I just want to ask you, if we if we want to go long something, and and there's and there's two pivots above, um, where why is it important to know where the resistance is above? Any thoughts? And you can say DK if you don't know. If we want to go long. Why is it important to know where the resistance is? It might, well, if the resistance, it might not get through that resistance. If you want to go long, you want, you want to see the gap over the resistance, right? So where is the stock, if you want to go long, where is the stock gapping, where is the stock gapping in terms of the, where the resistance is? And if you want to go short, where is the stock gapping in terms of the support? Because you want it to, to be under that support. So the next question is, if you're looking to go long, is so here's the next question, Lori. If you're looking to go long, is it better gapping well above support or just barely above support and why? And I'd like Lori to answer this or I would like um, one of the new people because I know you other guys know. I'd like to hear Den answer it. Den, welcome back. Jeffrey, Mark, Samuel, one of you guys. If you're looking to go long, is it better gapping well above support or just above support and why and we're talking about a pro gap here guys for pe I know some people just came in late um, and you can say DK if you don't know but I'd like to hear a response from the new people that just checked in Lori says well above support Mark says just above support so ah there's some there's some conflict here Mark says just above to retest new support so we got two say just above and we say one says well above. Anybody else have anything beside anybody else that I called on? Um, RT or Samuel, you guys have any thoughts? Either way, look for confirmation. Well, Lori, I would, I would, uh, I would, I might disagree with you there as well. Um, um, Actually, Mark and Jeff, uh, just above support is better. And why, Lori, if you had to guess, and you can say if you, you can say you don't know, just type DK if you don't know. But if you had to guess, now that I said that just above support is better, why is that better than well above support? And you can say DK if you don't know. But now that I said that that's better for sure, if you had to guess, why do you think that might be better? If it's just above support, why is that better? For a long. Now again, the question is for people that came in late, if you want to go long, why is it better for it to gap just above support instead of well above support? Well, possibly, but the other the other thing is what I'm thinking about, whenever I get an entry, I'm always thinking about, and um, Mark already asked about it, the smaller the stop, the smaller the stop, the better chance for me to make a lot more money, right? Because uh, we we trade we call, we talk about R's in here, Lori. Um, risk units. If you if you want to risk a hundred dollars in every trade you do, if you have a dime if you have a dime stop, you can buy a thousand shares.
But if you have a fifty cent stop on a hundred dollars on a hundred dollar risk, you can only buy two hundred shares. So you want a small stop because you want to be able to get a lot of shares. This thing goes up. If you get a nickel or dime stop, this thing goes up a dollar. You just made your month. You just had a great month. So we're always looking to try to find a small stop. So what's the best, highest odds of finding a small stop? A stock that's gapping just above support, it should hold that support, right? But if a stock gaps well above support, it could come all the way back down to support and still be fine, but you're going to have a big stop there. I mean, I mean uh, so for example, does that make sense, Lori? Okay, perfect. Okay. So number one is where the stock is gapping to in terms of support or resistance. If you want to go long, what I prefer, guys, is I want the stock to gap just above uh, resistance. If I want to go short, I want the stock to gap just below support. And obviously, someone else had said it earlier, and it was kind of, uh, um, I want plenty of void. Anna said it. Anna Banana. Anna said it. I want plenty of void. Void means that... So, for example, on EA's case, let's say resistance was at $20 and a gap just above 20 I want that next resistance to be at like 23 or 24 I don't want the next resistance to be at 20 50 because then I only have $0.50 cent void. So the void is the distance between where you're getting in at and where the next possible, uh, where the next, where the next possible place is where it could reverse. Does that make sense, Lori and everybody? Give me a one if that makes sense to, to, to some of you. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure, Lord, I know it makes sense to some of you new, the people that have been here for a long time, but I just want to talk to, to the new people more that might not know because uh, <laughs> I want to make sure everyone's following me because it's really important. Okay, so number one is where the stock is gapping to in terms of support. Uh, now, again, again, guys, for people who are coming in late, we're talking about a rating system. Um, we're using pro gaps as the example, but you can use this rating system for any strategy that you want to trade, okay? That's the point. So even if you don't trade pro gaps, this can be important for you in this to hear this lecture because you can apply this for anything that you're trying to trade. So number two, where the stock is gapping as far as support resistance. Number two is where is the stock gap in terms of the short-term pattern? And that's prior day. I want shock value. So Lori. Laurie, Samuel, Remington, Jeff, what is better? What does that mean? What is, what is better? Uh, what would be better shock in a short-term pattern? What does that mean? There's two. Uh, what does that mean as far as short-term pattern shock? What makes better shock? What makes not? What makes just an okay shock versus a really good shock? Well, felt pattern, but that's going to be now. We're talking more of a longer term pattern, so I'm talking about a short term pattern. What would what would be more shock? What what would be what would be okay shock, and that would be what would be really really good shock? And we already talked about it just a few minutes ago. That's your hint. We just talked about it a few minutes ago. You got it, Jeff. Over a large red bar. So if something's gapping over a large red bar. That's going to be a lot more shock than something that's gapping over just a little teeny red bar. And Lori, why is that so much? Why, why again, would you think if you're gapping just above a big red bar versus a little red bar, why does that have a better chance of going higher a lot more? Any thoughts there, Lori? And you can say DK if you don't know. And again, I'm only talking to Lori because she said she's more of a new trader. And I know if she gets it, then everybody gets it. So Lori, I hope you don't mind. And, and I hope the... Uh, I, I'm only doing that. I want to. I want to make sure you learn. And if I know if you got it, I know everyone else has got it. And if anybody else is a new trader or newer, let me know because I want to. Uh, I want to ask you as well. I want to make sure the new people get it because if I know the new people get it, I know everyone gets it. Well, because remember, Lori, I talked about shock. That means trapping people in, right? So if there was a big red bar yesterday, that means everyone yesterday probably shorted that bar, right? So if it's gapping over that bar, what are you doing? You're doing what to those people? It begins with a T. What's happening to those people that all shorted it yesterday and it's gapping above that red bar? It's trapping them. You got it. Yep. So all those people that shorted that yesterday, they're going, yikes, and they're going to want to cover today. So if you went long, hopefully you're going long, and then all those people shorting are covering, and that's what creates the nice, the nice high odds trade. 
So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. If it doesn't, let me know. But I'm going to go move on. I, I think that's pretty straightforward. So that's number two. Where is the stock gapping for? The bigger the bar, the better. Now, remember I mentioned, guys, in a pro gap, there's three things. There's daily. There's a wide range bar. There's a daily pattern that I like. And there's a weekly pattern I like for a pro gap. So let's go now to the daily pattern on the pro gap. What would create a better shock on a daily pattern, one pattern versus the other? Any thoughts there? A anybody for this one? Anybody for this one? And you can say DK if you don't know. What 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 pattern would be better on one daily versus another? Any any thoughts there? I'd like to hear some responses from anybody. And we're just looking at daily pattern. If you're looking at two different ones, no, we're not talking about weekly. We're talking about daily. Someone private messaged me. On a daily pattern, what would be better? What would make one daily pattern better than another? Ah, I'm, I'm getting a lot of a gap above basing. Okay, basing would be good. A failed pattern. Yeah, but that's just uh, that's one pivot. What would make one daily pattern better than the other? Remember, what was my? Let's go back to my definition. Maybe this will give you a hint again. This will. This should get. This should get you pretty easily. What I'm looking for, guys. What was my daily? What was my definition of a daily? Uh, of a daily pro gap, guys. A anybody remember? Okay, so what would make it better, Scott? What would make it better? <laughs> it's so obvious. Instead of gapping over two pivots, what if it's gapping over three or four pivots, right? That's what I was looking for. So what if it's a, instead of a double top, it's a triple top? Why is that better, right? Does that make sense, Scott? Does that make sense, Jose? All you guys had good ideas, though. Does that make sense? Well, because more if it's gone up there three times, if it's gone up there three times, almost equal high, then you've got even got more people in there that tried to go long, tried to short up, or tried to maybe short up there. Maybe some people faded up there. And now it's gapping over that fade. Maybe, maybe every time it went up there, there was people that were shorting there, and that's what made it come down. Okay? So now those people are going to have to cover as well. And then Rita kind of said it too, because, because what happens after three or four, what happens after five, five pivots or, 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 or equal highs? What is that now? What 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 what's the definition for me of five relatively equal highs? What is that? That's my definition of what I I define as a base, right? You guys have heard me say that. Rita got it on the nose. She said basing, right? So if you get five or more relatively equal highs, that's a base, and so that means there's been five days or more of that being up there, relatively equal highs. That's going to create so on a daily pattern. What's going to be better shock if it's over two pivots versus one? Now, last, let's go to the weekly. And this should be pretty straightforward. What's going to make a better weekly pattern? I said a weekly pattern is of gapping over one pivot. So what's going to be a better weekly pattern? You got it, Scott. Two or three pivots, right? Hey, Scott, remember? And for you guys that are in my, uh, for you guys that are in my room, Remember that play I've just recently introduced you guys to? It's called the Lotto play. L O T T O, the Lotto play, because you can, because you can invest a very little and you can make 20 or 30 hours in a day if you nail this pattern, right? The Lotto play. And what is the Lotto play? It's two weekly pivots, right? So you can see how all this intermint, all intermixes in. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, that's number two. Where is the stock gapping to? Now we're getting to the. Some of you guys already threw some answers out here. Now the number three, what I look, for, what I look for makes a pro gap is where is it gapping to in terms of a long-term pattern? And we just talked about that. Um, a long-term pattern. Um, so what makes a what? What does that mean? What 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 is a long what 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 makes a better long term pattern? I mean, what makes a good gap if it's in a long term pattern? 
So if its stock's been gapping down for a while, so is it better if, it, if a stock's been gapping down for a while or if a stock's been going down for a while and then it gaps under two pivots, two more pivots, lower, or if the stock's been gapping up for a while and it gaps under two pivots? What's better? First or second? First or second? First or second example. One or two, guys. What's better? Stock's been going in the same direction for a while. Scott's got it. Number two, right. Because it's a change of trend, right. You got it, Rita. It's a change of trend, right? So a better long-term pattern would be if a stock has been in a daily uptrend and now all of a sudden the trend has changed. And Scott kind of talked about it for a daily. He, he set a failed, a failed setup. So... What is a failed setup? I'm going to help Lori on that. I'm sure she's probably going to ask. So I'm going to tell you right now, Lori. Let me see if I can give you an example. Um, if anybody has one, let me know. Um, let me try to find something with a failed pattern here. Let's go to EA here just for a second. It's basically, Lori, when the stock's been, if we're looking at a long, Lori, it's when the stock's been going, making higher highs and higher lows on a daily pattern. Now, all of a sudden, it makes a lower high and a lower low, and it rolls over. That, that, it didn't, it didn't, it's the first time it doesn't make the new high. In the, so it's been making a new high, new low, new high, new low, new high, new low, new high, new low. So picture that in your mind, right, Lori? A stock that's been making a new high and a new low, a new high, then a new low. I'm sorry. What am I saying? A new high and, a, and a, a, a higher high and a higher low. Then it goes up again, makes another higher high and a higher low, and then a higher higher and a higher low. So it keeps making higher highs and higher lows, right, Lori? Now, this very last time, it makes a slightly lower high, and now it takes out that lower low. That, that, that pattern has failed now. Do you follow me? I'm sorry I messed that up a bit. Does that make sense, Lori? Okay, cool. Sorry about that. I messed that up initially. That's what we call we call that a buy setup. When it makes a new high and comes back and sets up again to, to create the the, the, low, the the higher low and starts to trigger, that's the buy setup. <clears throat> but then when it when that buy setup triggers, if it doesn't make a new high then and it rolls over and makes a new low, that's the failed setup that we're talking about. Okay, perfect. What happened there? One second. Something happened to my slides there. One moment, guys. <laughs> I just, uh, where'd my, that's really weird. Uh, I lost my, uh, I lost my ability, I lost my ability to, to tab up or down. I don't know what happened there. Um, I'm going to try to close it down and come back. I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened there. That's really weird. Let's try that again. Uh, so a little glitch here. I didn't change anything, though, Scott. That was, it was weird. I, I just shut it down. Though. I'm, now i got to try to open it up again. Sorry about that for the little uh, technical glitch here. Uh, uh.
You know, I lost some other stuff on my computer, too. I don't know what happened there. That's really weird. Uh, where is this at now? I can't find it. Okay, here we go. It's coming back up here in a second. Okay, we're back in business. That was very strange. So where would the stock gap into in terms of long-term pattern, um, guys? What would be the best long-term shock value? Uh, I, again, we talked about um, over two pivots versus one. So that's what we just uh, talked about. And then the, the, the fourth thing would be the size of the gap. What do I mean by size of the gap? Anybody, any thoughts there? What do I mean by size of gap? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, what do I mean by size of gap? Well, actually, um, uh, Where it's gapping, um, where it's gapping um, above or below resistance. Okay, so if you're going long, what I'm talking about is um, not the void. The void is the void, and that's just basically once you get above an area where the next resistance is, that's the void. If you're going long, and where the next support is, if you're going short, right? So that's the void. So the void's the void. But the size of the gap, what I'm talking about, is how far it's gapping. Um, Price-wise, um, first of all, what I'm looking for in this particular entry is on the size of the gap. Um, I do not want it. Um, I want it gapping, as I spoke about before, up here. What's better, just above the gap or below, just above resistance or below support, right? That's where I want it. But what 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 size is that? I need to find that, right? So for me. I don't like it to be more than 40 cents, okay? So if there's a pivot at 20 and there's a double top at 20 and I'm looking to in a double top at 20, I'm looking to I'm looking for it to open up like at 2010, 2005. I don't 2040 is about the tops. So I'm not more than about 40 cents is what I'm looking for. Now if it's a $100 stock, I'll give it more I'll give it more room, okay? So for the size of the gap, what makes a better gap is for me if I'm looking to go long on a pro gap, what makes it better is a stock. And we already talked about this. It was kind of in, it was kind of Bart in 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 number one here, in in terms of gapping in times of support and resistance. I want to gap in just above support, but how far above support? I want it 40 cents or less. Okay, does that make sense? 40 cents or less if it's under 100 dollars. If it's over 100 dollars, I'll give it more room. But again, it just depends. Um, some people have a limit on how big of a stop they'll take. Some people, I mean, how big of a stop they'll take. Some people won't take a stop that's more than 50 cents high. You know, a, a total, I'm talking about they won't take a trade unless it has a stop that's 50 cents or less. Some people might be a dollar. So it really depends. Some people may not have any rules at all, but I, I think you should have rules. So it just depends on what your rules are, okay? But for me, I like to see it now. You guys have seen me plenty of times take gaps in the room that are more than, uh, gapping up more than a uh, 40 cents but they have to have a really tight base that's the one so if they have a really if they gap if it gaps up a dollar or two above the support if I see a really tight base I still might play that that's the only exception for me 
Now, what's the last thing, guys, that I look for? And in, 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 uh, the hint is somebody's already said it before, earlier in the in the session. What's the last thing I look for that makes a great pro-gap? Volume's always important, uh, and that's a th and and volume you uh, and and great great. Uh, yep, Al's got it. Vol volume is great, Scott or, or Jeff. Volume is great, and um, volume, guys. The reason I take why do I take pro gaps? Because they're usually gaps that have earnings. They're usually gaps that have news, FDA approvals. They have all kinds of stuff going on. And what happens on those days? Those are days where there's going to be more people trading the stock, right? And what happens with volume? Volume always precedes price. I always say that it's always says volume precedes price. Get, volume is get, is the gas that makes stocks go, right? So if a stock is trading 10 times normal trading volume and it has a 10 cent range, it's probably going to trade bigger than a 10 cent range that day, right? So that's the one day on an earning stock. If there's a stock that has an average range, and what I mean by average range, Lori, and for someone who might not know, if the, if the average range over the last, if you go look at the average trading range of that bar, and it's only 20 cents a day, some people never take that into account, right? And then they start trading stocks that only have a 20 cent range, and they're frustrated because they never make any money. That's another element you have to look at. So a stock that has a 20 cent range, I'm not going to trade that normally. But on earnings day, if it's going to trade two or three times normal trading volume, I'm going to look at it that day. That's the only day I'm going to look at it when it has when it has really heavy volume. Or let's say a stock trades a half a million shares a day and it's showing a half a million shares in the pre-market. I might trade that stock that day because it's going to it's already traded its normal trading volume. It's going to have an exceptional day. But again, you got to be careful because the stocks that have the lower ranges and the lower volume, they often have the bigger spreads, and those are the stocks that I want also want to stay away from because that's more slippage and that's it's just higher. It's just lower odds trades. So the term pro gap means professional gaps, a professional gap. Uh, we also sometimes call it a money gap in this room, okay? So pro gap is a professional gap w which the professional traders look at. They always try to do the opposite, often do the opposite of what other people will do. Um, in a big gap, on a big gap up in the market, I'll often look to fade. If, a gap, if the market gap is down big, I'll look to go long, especially if it's near a support area. So... Um, where, where the normal person, where the small investor, Lori, if a stock gaps up, they'll often chase, or stock, or the market gaps down, they're going to get out at the bottom. So the the pro professional, the real trader, does the opposite. Does that make sense, Lori? Okay, perfect. So the size of the gap um, and, what, and what makes it the best, um, 40 cents or less, ideal. And then lastly, um, the relative strength compared to the general market. So what I mean that by that, um, uh, Al said it just a second ago, relative strength compared to the general market. What that means is... Um, what that means is... Um, so what's better, Lori, if you had to guess? If the stock is gapping up and the market's gapping down, or the scop is gapping up and the market's gapping up, what would be better? And you can say DK if you don't know. <laughs> well, actually, it's the opposite, but that's okay. Um, because why is it good, guys? If the, if the market's gapping down and your stock's gapping up, why is that... Why, what makes that stock better? What's the word I'm looking for? It's, two, it's a two-letter word. What does that stock have that the market doesn't? If the, relative strength. You got it, Matt. Murrah, Murrah. You got it. It's got relative strength to the market. So, Lori, if the market's gapping down and your stock's gapping up, that shows relative strength to the market. Does that make sense? It's stronger than the market is what that means. Does that make sense? So now let's say the market goes down for that first half hour of the market, as it often does. The first half hour of the day, the market will, the market will often trade in one direction for the first half hour to hour in the day, right? So let's say for now, the market's been going, we gap down, and your stock gapped up, right? And now it's just trading sideways. And as the market's been going down for the first half hour of the market, now the market's right at support area. What's going to likely do better? A stock that went down with the market all the way, or your stock that's been holding near the high of the whole day. It's going to be 
your stock that's been holding you the high of the high day because it's showing relative strength to the market. It has higher odds of going higher because it never fell down when the rest of the market did. Does that make sense, Laurie? Awesome. Okay. You're absolutely right. Correct. Good. So I'm glad that makes sense. And that's uh, so, so on a pro gap, um, it's much better if the market's gapping down and, you're, and, you're in the, and the gap's going against the market, you know it's strong to the market. Or if the market's gapping up and this thing's going down, it, you know that there's a good chance no matter what the market does, your stock's still going to go down because it's showing relative strength right off the get-go, assuming you get a pattern after the opening. Now, often you'll see a stock gap down low and it'll go right back up and go up right away. You never got a pattern, right? But I'm talking about a stock that goes against the market and then you get a pattern that, that says it's going to go that same direction and then you trade that pattern. So... That's the last thing that I look for in a pro gap that makes it good. Now, guys, again, if you don't trade pro gaps, no worries. You can take the same thing that I just spoke about and use it for any strategy that you're trying to perfect. And just think about, ask yourself again, what makes my strategy really good, if really, really good? And that's the things you're going to start adding to it in your rules. So now... The gap rating system, here it is. Where is the stock gapping to in terms of support and resistance? Where is the stock gapping to in terms of short-term pattern? Remember, over a wide range bar is much better than a smaller range bar. Where is the stock gapping terms in terms of the long-term pattern? Remember, again, if the stock's been in a downtrend and all of a sudden it, it, it gaps above that, it breaking that downtrend, that's going to be a really, that's going to be a much better, uh, a much higher rated than something that's just gapping down and continuing to go down. The size of the gap, um, if it's just over that support area or over that wide range bar if you're going long, I'm sorry, if it's just over the resistance area or just over that wide range bar if you're going long, that's going to be much better typically than a stock that's gapping well above it. And then relative strength to relative weakness. If the market's gapping up and your stock's gapping up, that's good, that's fine. But if the market's gapping up and your stock's gapping down and you're wanting to go short, that's even better because it's showing much relative strength to the market. There's a really good chance it's going to do really well, even with no matter what the market does. Gapping from gapping to where the stock is gapping from in terms of long. Gapping to number three. You're saying number two and three gapping from, but you're. You keep saying gapping too. Ah, uh, okay. Gapping from. Sorry. Thanks, Scott. Okay. So how do we how do we make our rating system better, guys? And this is on anything that you do, guys. On your trading, how to be your trading better? First of all, review all your trades after the market. And if you haven't taken any trades, you can paper trade, Lori. If you haven't taken any trades yet, if you think you want to do a certain pattern, start paper trading it. And take them on paper where you would have gotten in and out. Learn what entries work and what entries didn't work. And then ask yourself, did you follow what, you're, what you've written so far in your trading plan? And the trading plan is something that you constantly develop. And we'll talk about that all the time in the trading room. So if you don't have one, it's something we talk about all the time in the trading room. And I can help you with that um, if you're not a member of the room and you want to learn how to, to, to make a trading plan. Um, so, guys, that's pretty much it for the lecture today. I have one more slide to go through before we go. But before I show you the last slide of the day, I just want to ask you, on a scale of 1 to 10, and it won't hurt my feelings one way or the other, on a scale of 1 to 10, the 10 that you liked it, you liked it great, you learned a lot of information, one, it didn't, you didn't learn that much information, you probably don't ever want to hear it again. Give me, a, give me a rating on a scale of 1 to 10 whether you liked it and you'd like to hear it again, or if it was just okay, give me a 5. If you didn't like it all, give me a one or two. It won't hurt my feelings at all. And just give me an idea um, if you learned something today and uh, if you'd like to hear this again in the future sometime. And, Lori, I'd love to hear from you, too, since you're the new kid on the block, so to speak. Okay, Jeff, thanks for stopping in. And uh, we'll do this again. Um, we'll do this again soon. Um, uh, a new, another lecture in the next few weeks or something. If you guys have a topic that you'd like to hear from, hang on, Jeff, one, one more slide before you go. Oh, he's already left. 
Um, if you guys have any ideas for f future lecture topics, send it to Rick at TradingWings.com. Put uh, Wednesday topic, Wednesday uh, lecture idea in the in the memo section, and then just tell me what the idea is, and maybe I'll do a, a lecture about it. And then lastly, guys, the last slide, most importantly, watch for upcoming lectures. They happen every Wednesday at 12 p.m. You, you're welcome to stay the rest of the day and trade with us. Our trading room is only $99 per month, but if you get into a six or 12 month uh, um, uh, of kind of uh, uh, commitment, we can give you. We can give. We can talk about giving you a better deal. And if you're not consistently profitable, you have no no longer have any excuses because our trading room at ninety nine dollars a month is a fraction of what most other trading rooms are. Most are anywhere from three three hundred three fifty to three hundred fifty dollars a month. And we do the exact same thing here, but you probably learn more. We do the exact same thing here that we do, they do there, but you probably learn more here because it's a smaller room. And I can give you guys more individual coaching uh, attention. So uh, I hope you like what you heard today. Um, we, uh, the Lori, uh, we have a swing trading letter. Um, if you go to tradingwings.com and look at our subscriptions, that's Dustin, and he uh, he will send you out uh, actual. Um, if you subscribe to it for ninety nine dollars, it's not the trading room. He will give you actually swing trading letter ideas of when to enter, where to exit at. Um, he has videos. Um, and that might, if, if you're more of a swing trader, you don't think you'd be able to day trade or, or you're not interested in day trading, that might be the way for you to go. But you're more than welcome to come to any of our lectures that we have in the future. And I'm sure Dustin will have some too. And uh, if you want to learn more about the, um, that, um, you can send uh, a, a, an email to carolyn at tradingwings.com. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, thanks again. And um, for this, uh, we got the we got the FOMC minutes coming out in another hour, and we'll see if we get any reaction to the market after that. Um, I'll be here. I'm going to take a break right now, but I'll be here back and forth if you have questions. And uh, if I see any trades this afternoon, I'll throw them out there. And if not, uh, look for le upcoming lectures for you guys who just checked in for the day. And we'll be doing this again soon. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Okay, Al, sounds good. I don't know what happened to my, um, my. oh, there it is. There's my volume bar in this room. I couldn't figure out where it was. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.